not only do we you know, have to worry about you know, the pandemic and our health, then someone tricks you into this with, yeah, in the middle of a pandemic. Now this North Texan got a call that you or maybe someone you know may have received, and that type of call is now the target of a nationwide crackdown on phantom and fake debt collectors. High team reporter Ginger Allen digs into what you need to know if you get one of those calls. It's all new here at 4:30. Okay, so are you guys ready? Stacy Haggerty is one of the last people who should be fooled. From her home south of Dallas, she trains customer service agents, the legit people who make calls. I think I'm a little savvy and a little, you know, sophisticated. I'm not one to, that would easily be tricked. It scared me. Earlier this summer, she got a call from an alleged debt collector. They were filing warrants for me in Ellis County. I had owed someone some money. They had warrants for my arrest and that the police were coming to my house. Haggerty sent $600 to the phantom caller. And as soon as I did it, and, you know, I realized, why did I do this? So I called my bank, and my banks, you know, reversed everything, and then I filed a complaint with the FTC. So I got duped. You're not the only person this has happened to, and today the FTC cracked down big time. I'm glad. The FTC joined law enforcement nationwide for Operation Corrupt Collector. 32 defendants are now under injunctive orders for using robocalls to leave deceptive messages, threatening legal action, and using consumers' personal information to convince them the threats are real. Anne Lejeune is an attorney at the FTC office in Dallas. These collectors pretend to be government officials, process servers, investigators, and and attorneys to intimidate people into paying. So far in 2020, Texas has received more than 10,000 debt collection complaints. More than half of them have been abusive or threatening. You should always find out who is calling you. Within five days, collectors must validate or tell you the amount of the debt and the name of the creditor. Don't respond to threats. Do your own detective work. Check with the creditor. And if you don't know, dispute it. So hopefully this will help people to be a little more educated, to hesitate before they give their banking information to someone. Don't get trapped like I did. Ginger Allen, CBS 11 News.